Hey guys, Pample here, back on my Ticket server, and today I'm going to be teaching you about something pretty complicated that is included in the Railcraft mod, and they are called Signal Blocks. Now this is just the first episode of what I'm going to explain with them, I'm just going to cover a couple of basics, not the whole entire thing, because in all honesty, this entire thing is really confusing, the whole Signal Blocks. I mean, I've been working for probably 20 minutes trying to understand all this just so I could do the tutorial. But anyways, let's get started. And also, this is not connected with my Railcraft tutorial, if you're familiar with that. I know I'm at the same place and basically explaining the same mod, but it's not connected because this is a totally different series. And yeah. So, anyways. Um, to start off, I'm going to give you some recipes that you're going to need for this uh, um, tutorial, or for these blocks. First of which is a switch track, which is pretty straightforward. Um, if you're familiar with rails, then you'll know how this works. If not, then I highly suggest you watch my Railcraft tutorials. Anyways, what you'll just need is eight standard rails put into like a chest plate formation with a stone rail bed, and you get switch tracks. Switch tracks are used to allow um, tracks passing over them to turn um, in one direction, usually to the right or the left, depending on how you place it, uh, with the input from a switch lever. Now, a switch lever or lever, depending on where you're from, is kind of complicated. It involves rose red dye, um, squid ink, bone meal, a piston, a lever, and an iron ingot. And yeah, so it is pretty um, complex to make. It's got some kind of weird ingredients that you need to be getting. But yeah, and what a switch lever does is it can change the switch track, which direction it's facing, uh, just by right-clicking it or possibly applying redstone signal. Don't take my word on that one, though. But I know if you right-click it, it'll just change the direction of the track. So, yeah. Okay, next thing we'll be using is this. It is called the block signal. And it is, it's pretty complicated to make. You need an ink sack and two iron ingots, and then these two new things. First of which is called a signal lamp. And a signal lamp is made out of th three glass panes, lime dye, dandelion yellow, rose red, piece of redstone, and a piece of glowstone. So, if you don't have all these colored dyes that you're going to need, uh, best find someone that does. And I'm not done with the recipe yet, sorry. You'll also need a controller circuit, which is just as com complicated. You're going to need a piece of lapis, uh, two pieces of redstone, gold ingot, slime ball, piece of sand, another piece of sand, and a redstone repeater to make a controller circuit. How those things combine to make a controller circuit, I don't know. That's just how the Railcraft tutorial guys made it. And they also decided to make it really, really complicated for all of us. So, yeah, this is not a cheap kind of thing that you'll be doing. It's pretty expensive, or at least uh, it requires a bit of time commitment. Anyways, next we move on to tools. The first one you'll need is a signal tuner, and it's not giving me the recipe, hold on, hold on, signal tuner, here we go. Gonna need two stone buttons, a redstone torch, and an, a receiver circuit. A receiver circuit is made like this. I believe it's the same recipe, except you're just switching the lapis, I think. But either way, it's the same ingredients, just placement is different. And you'll also need a signal block surveyor. It's doing that again. Okay, signal block surveyor, a compass, two buttons, a glass pane, and a piece of redstone. So once again, not cheap, but you're going to need all these. Now onwards to the explaining. Here I have two signal blocks placed on this dirt, um, which is next to this track. It needs to be next to track for it to work, or else it's not going to do anything. I hope you're perceptive enough to figure that out on out of your own. 
But anyways, as you can see, they're blinking red. And just push the minecart in. They're, they're both still blinking red, not doing anything. That's because they're not connected. Now, this is where the, the signal block surveyor comes in. What you want to do is right-click on this one to start it. And also right-click on this one. And the two of them can now see that they're connected to each other, and they turn green. Now, colors for this uh, mean different things. For the block signals, green means that there is no cart in between the two signals. A, if one of them turns yellow, it means that a cart is moving away from them. And if they turn red, it means a cart is coming towards them. So, on to the visual learning. Watch this one. It's green, right? Now it's red, because the cart is coming towards it. And now this gone, it's back to green. Same thing with this way. It's red, because the cart's coming towards it. Now, if the cart is stopped in between both the tracks, they'll both be red, because the cart has stopped in between both of them. Now, this is a little hard to show, but if you push the cart away from you, or away from the signal, it'll turn yellow. See, if you push it, it turns yellow while the cart's moving, because the cart is moving away from it. It's kind of hard to show, but if you push it away, it'll turn yellow. Anyway, these, this is important. Trust me on this one. Um, I'll get to an example in a minute. But yeah, since the block signals are connected to each other, they'll be able to read whether or not a cart is within their area, and you will be able to tell if a cart's within the area based on the three colors that these things offer. Next, I'm going to show you a way that you can label this as important. Now, as you can see here, I've got a basic track kind of set up. i got a holding track here and a couple of junction tracks set up like so. And if we put a cart on here, just kind of push it around, it'll turn right. It'll stop on the holding track. Don't want it to stop on the holding track, so I'm just going to take that off. And got another track here. We also got this track that, that'll allow anything in that little off-ramp to get back on. And if you push it like this, it will ignore both of the turn ramps and go forward. So, yeah, pretty straightforward setup. Get, get off the holding track. But anyways, we want to make it so that, say, a cart is here on the holding track, but also there's another cart here in this area. And we don't want cart number one to collide with cart number two. So, what can we do about it? Well, we have a way to keep the, keep the station here from sending the cart along its way onto its impending doom of colliding with the other cart. Allow me to explain. First up, we're going to use our previous knowledge and set up an area here with these two block signals. Put them here and here, as this will be the radius that they will be working in. Now we're going to take this tool, the signal block surveyor, and right-click both of them to start the, the green lights. Now that we have that, it'll read whether or not there is a cart within the area. Next, we are going to use the receiver block. And d did I show you how to make a receiver block? I don't think I did. Well, anyways, this is the receiver block. Four pieces of iron, a piece of redstone, and a receiver circuit. You remember how to make that. And you're going to take the receiver block, and you're going to put it near the uh, holding track, or whatever track you're trying to get a redstone signal to. This thing will emit redstone signal. However, if you were to right-click on it, I think just regularly, yep, you can uh, choose what color you want it to emit redstone on. Right now, it's blinking red, which means it's not connected to anything. But remember the colors from the previous experiment and use that in deciding how you want to program it. Now, since we want it so that when there's a cart in this area, we do not want it to be powered, we will not choose red. However, we will choose green and yellow. Solid green and yellow, not blink yellow or blink red. Now, since it is set to green and yellow, it means that 
whenever the light it's connected to is yellow or green, this will be powered. However, it's not connected to anything right now. So we need to take our signal tuner, right click this signal block and this signal block to connect both of them. And see, this is turned green, and since it is green, the redstone has been powered. And since the red this here is powered, because the area is clear, so therefore it all works out. Let's test it. Just gonna push this in onto the holding track, and it sends it along its way. But look, now the lights are red. Oh, okay, this one's green, but this one's red, and this is the important one. So as you can see, now the light is red because there is a track in the way, and therefore, therefore this is turned off. So, since it is turned off, the track or the cart will be held onto by the holding track until this area has been cleared, in which it'll immediately be shot off and will continue on its way. Now, I'm going to try and explain something a little tougher now. As you can see, when this one turns yellow, it means that the cart's going away from it. So, if it's yellow, this will still be powered. It's hard to show because it's very temporary. However, if a cart's moving away from the track, this will still be powered, meaning that even if um, a cart's moving along the track, you can still send a second one to follow it. So you don't have to wait for that cart to finish its route before you send off another one. Just a way to make it more efficient, especially if your block signals are further apart. Alright, so that's all that I want to cover for this tutorial. As I figure out more myself and come up with more demos, I will be showing you more. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment, and whatever. And yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>